When interest rates rise, the price of any bonds that we hold is going to fall. So then the question becomes, is there any metric that we can use to evaluate a bond and see how sensitive it's going to be, the price of that bond, in, given that there's a change in the interest rate? And luckily, we have a tool called Macaulay Duration that will perform just that function. So Macaulay Duration is actually, it's, it's going to be measured in years. And what it is, is it's the weighted average maturity of the cash flows from a bond. So if we want to look at a bond from, from an investor's perspective, we can look and use Macaulay Duration and say, okay, looking at this bond, how long is it going to take us to receive these cash flows? And so we can actually compare the duration in, in, in terms of years for different bonds. And a, a bond with a higher number of years for its Macaulay Duration is going to be more sensitive to interest rate changes. Now I talk, we're talking about the volatility of the bond's price is going to be higher with respect to changes in the interest rate. So the way where we calculate Macaulay Duration, I've actually provided a formula here for the mathematically inclined of you. Uh, so basically in the numerator, we're going to have the sum of the present value of the time-weighted cash flows. And then we're going to divide that by the price of the bond. And the price of the bond, of course, is just the present value of the cash flows, of the interest payments, and then the, the, the face value of the bond. So you might be saying, what are we, we're actually dividing the present value of the cash flows by the present value of the cash flows? What, what is going on here? Well, it's important to know in the numerator here, we're talking about the time-weighted present value of the cash flows. Now, I know that's kind of abstract. That's maybe a little difficult to understand. Let's walk through an example, and it'll become a little bit easier. So let's say that you have a five-year bond, and it has a $1,000 face value, and the coupon rate is 4%. So since we have a $1,000 face value and a coupon rate of 4%, that means that this bond is going to be paying out interest of $40 a year. So we can go ahead and we can we can think about the cash flows of this bond. In period one, right, in the first year, we're going to have a cash flow of $40 for the interest on this bond from the coupon payment, right? Now, the market rate of interest is 4.5%. So what can we do? We can use that market rate of 4.5% in order to discount the cash flow, right? So we're just going to take 40 let me, let me think of a place to put this here. So to calculate this, we're going to take 40, and then we're going to divide it by 1 plus our discount rate, right, which is going to be this 4.5%. So we just, let me put it in here. I hope, okay, 1.0, there we go. So when we calculate that out, it's actually going to come out, and let me change to make it green to make this consistent to $38.28. And I've rounded here, so I apologize if my number is slightly different than yours. So all we've done is discount the cash flow here. Now what we're going to do, and now we're going to multiply this, this discounted cash flow here by the time period, by this one, right? And that's going to give us $38.28 again. Now you might think this is kind of mechanical. Why are we doing this? Well, actually it's going to become obvious as we start going now into uh, further time periods, into the future. So when we go for period two, for example, we're going to take that $40 cash flow, we're going to discount it again. Now, obviously, this time it's being discounted two periods back because this is year two. So we're not going to divide by this. I'm not going to go through all the present value calculations. Uh, you can check out our other video if you, if you need refreshing there. But it's going to give $36.63. But now we're going to multiply it by the time period, right? That's what we're talking about when we set back with our formula that in the numerator we're talking about the time-weighted present value of the cash flows. We're going to multiply each time we get the present value of the cash flow. We're going to multiply it by the time. So I'm going to take this 2 over here, and I'm going to multiply that by this $36.63. And that's going to give us $73.26. Likewise, I'm going to continue to discount all the cash flows. And bear in mind, in year 5, we're actually having a cash flow of $1,040 because you're getting the face value of $1,000 plus the $40 interest payment. And so all I've done is I just discount these cash flows in each period. And then when we look at this discounted cash flows here, this 3505 in period three, we're going to multiply it by three. 
and that's going to give us $105.16. Now, I actually I noticed that it's off by one cent there. Forgive me, I used Microsoft Excel to do the calculations, so the rounding is going to be off a little bit here, but you get the idea. So we go ahead and we take, in each case, we take the time period, that's our T, right, that time period, and we multiply it by the present value of the cash flow, and that's going to give us the present value of the time-weighted cash flow. Okay, now once we have that, we can go and sum up all of these time-weighted cash flows, the present value of those time-weighted cash flows, that's going to give us $4,523.61. Now, to get at the price of the bond, well, the price of the bond is just the present value of the cash flows, right? Not the time-weighted ones, just the regular old-fashioned present value of the cash flows. So we sum up all these numbers here, and that gives us $978.05. This makes sense that the bond is trading at a discount because the current rate of market, or the market rate of interest is higher than what the coupon rate is, right? So people can get a higher rate of interest on the market than what our bonds pay. So our bonds are trading at a discount for $978.05. So now, in order to calculate the Macaulay duration, what we're going to do is we're going to take the present value of the time-weighted cash flow and just divide it by the present value of the cash flows, or the sum of the present value of the cash flows, I should say, which is the price of the bond, right? So we just take that $4,523.61, and we divide it by $978.05. Now, that's going to yield 4.63 years. Remember, we said that the Macaulay duration, the Macaulay, I'm just abbreviating here as MACD, the Macaulay duration is expressed in terms of years. Now, what does that mean? Let's say that we had another bond and that we had this other bond that we were looking at and it had a Macaulay duration of 7.2 years. That means that basically this person, the investor who gets the 7.2 year bond is going to be exposed to more interest rate risk, right? More rate, if there's a change in interest rates, uh, for example, interest rates uh, skyrocket up, then that's going to affect the price of the bond with the higher duration more, right? Because that's the, the, the longer the duration, the longer it's going to take for the investor to receive all these cash flows, right? And so we can just look and say, look, there's going to be more volatility, more interest rate risk, the higher the duration that the bond has. And now another nice thing we can do with Macaulay duration is we can use it to calculate a different type of duration, which is called modified duration, and which we're going to talk about in our next video.